the rise and fall of the NASL. Football, or soccer in North America, has grown with the MLS for the past few years. The MLS would have never existed without the previous top flight league, which was the NASL, North American Soccer League. The NASL was founded in 1967, operating from 1968 through 1984 and folding in 1985. It was the first soccer league to have successful attention in the United States, which seemed like an exciting project for players worldwide. Like the MLS, some clubs were from Canada and the league didn't have promotion or relegation. Let's look back at how this folded league was eventually essential for the growth of soccer in North America. Before the 1966 World Cup, the United States only qualified for three World Cups. The US qualified for the first ever World Cup in 1930 and finished third. They would then be eliminated in the round of 16 in the 1934 World Cup and eliminated in the group stage in the 1950 World Cup. After England won the 1966 World Cup, the documentary film Goal would be a success in the US, with over 1 million people watching the film on their television screens. These numbers convinced American sports investors to start a soccer league that could gain this much attention and grow the sport in the US and Canada. Two professional soccer leagues in the United States, United Soccer Association, USA and the National Professional Soccer League NPSL had failed to impress audiences because of their lack of quality and being viewed as a training exercise for foreign players before a World Cup. Thus, both leagues merged in early December of 1967 to make the NASL. After the NASL was formed, they would try quickly to bring eyes to the league by bringing more foreign talents into the teams. One of the first players that were well known then and was successful was Brazilian striker Vava. Vava played for the San Diego Toros in 1968 and he was in the latest years of his career. The NASL would also host friendlies against European clubs like Manchester City and also Santos, where the great Pelé would play. The league would collapse quickly, with five teams out of 17 remaining. The rest of the 12 teams folded because of the expense of high salaries of the players, renting stadiums for the games, and losing money because of poor attendance and viewership on TV. The league would soon gain its short success after introducing some rules, new teams and new players joining. Some rules that gained attention because of its difference from European football or football in general are using a clock counting down from the 90th minute. One rule many know, which was also used in the MLS in its early years, is the penalty shootout, as in the ice hockey version. Players would start with the ball at the 35-yard line and try to score in five seconds. It was an absurd penalty for many who watched football at the time, and even now, but it was entertaining to watch. Slowly, the NASL and soccer in the US kept gaining attention. Sports Illustrated featured a soccer player on its cover for the first time in 1973. The player featured was Bob Rigby, a goalkeeper from the Philadelphia Atoms, who won the NASL championship against the Dallas Tornado 2-0. The Philadelphia Atoms gained a fan base, averaging over 10,000 fans throughout the 1973 season. In 1971, the New York Cosmos were added to the league and would be arguably the most critical team in NASL history. Four years after their addition to the league, they signed one of the best players of all time, Pele. The Boston Minutemen would also sign Eusebio, one of the generation's best players. Teams from the NASL were attracting global football stars to come and play for them at a decent age, which would then gain a bigger audience. The Pele signing to New York was the major one that surprised many because of his popularity worldwide and his talent since he was the best player and most influential player in the world. Pele's arrival in the US was great for the league as Cosmos's attendance would increase because of his status in football. He signed for the New York Cosmos on the 10th of June 1975, which gave the league so much exposure in the US and worldwide. Around 10 million people watched Pele's debut for the Cosmos live on CBS against the Dallas Tornado. The year after, the NASL became mainstream as it would get covered in American newspapers and worldwide because of the signing of Pele. Everyone in the world wanted to see what Pele would do in a new club since he spent his time at Santos for most of his career. The success of the New York Cosmos kept increasing, with over 40,000 fans appearing per game 
throughout three seasons. Pele's impact in the league convinced other teams to sign these world-class players during their later years. The late 70s was the peak of the NASL, with more world-class players joining the league. The New York Cosmos would sign one of the best defenders in the world, German Franz Beckenbauer. In 1976, the Los Angeles Aztecs signed George Best of Manchester United to compete with the Pele signing. George Best was also one of the best players in the world at age 29. Johan Cruyff was the next global football star to arrive in the NASL in 1979, joining Los Angeles and Best traded to the Fort Lauderdale Strikers from Miami. Cruyff greatly impacted Los Angeles by winning the MVP award and increasing the team's fans' attendance. Bobby Moore, an English legend who won his country the World Cup, played for the San Antonio Thunder and the Seattle Sounders in 1976 and 1978 respectively. Although more foreign superstars playing for NASL teams was exciting, there were rules to be obeyed by the NASL, which included starting at least two American or Canadian players and having six native players in each team's 17-man roster. It was a difficult ask for all teams in the league, but it was needed to avoid FIFA sanctions and help develop native players. These issues would lead to a rapid downfall of the NASL. The absurd rules of the NASL weren't sanctioned by FIFA, who also warned the US Federation to ban NASL players from playing international games, including the World Cup in 1978. These world-class players would only stay for a short time in these teams as their salaries and other player salaries were too high. In fact, over 70% was spent on player salaries by team owners. This would not be sustainable for the league as the financial problems kept increasing competition for the major indoor soccer league, MISL, and bidding to host the FIFA World Cup in 1986. The MISL averaged 8,000 fans per game and had disputes with the NASL over US-based players and forming their own indoor league. Teams in the NASL were losing money from the 80s and teams were folding from 24 teams to 21 teams to 14 teams, finally ending up with only 9 teams. In 1985, the NASL suspended the season with only two teams interested in playing, the Minnesota Strikers and the Toronto Blizzard. The remaining teams were interested in the indoor league and a planned relaunch of the NASL in 1986 never happened. The failure of the NASL was a blessing in disguise for the US and soccer in North America, as it became one of the most popular sports in the country. On July 4, 1988, FIFA awarded the United States the 1994 World Cup. The MLS would be founded in 1993 and officially its first season was in 1996. The league has continued to grow over the past years with a similar formula of signing aging players to increase the level of the league and gain more viewership. The US, Canada and Mexico will host the FIFA World Cup in 2026, with 11 stadiums hosting in the United States. It will be the first World Cup with three countries hosting the competition. The MLS and soccer in North America keeps on growing, and in the 2026 World Cup we can see how much soccer has grown in front of the world. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe for more football stories.